Mitchell, James calling. Welcome to MJT Reviews. And I'm here with Stuart Wilders from ESE Fan TV, a great channel with a panelist talking about all things Eurovision, so check it out. And uh, in this one, we're talking about Italy. So um, I know you, you've you just had initial reactions to it. Uh, what, what were your first impressions to Italy? Well, it's got a very uh, modern beat to it. It's, it's up-tempo. Um, Italy normally send sort of ballads. Uh, the last year they sent a ballad. Um, as far as long back as I can remember, they've sent ballads. Yeah, usually Italy do really well. They normally get a really high jury vote. Well, no reason to think they won't this year as well. Uh, it's a good song. Uh, he's a good singer. He's a young chap. Uh, he has good stage presence. I just had a quick peek of the national final uh, presentation. And it should do well for Italy. It'd be another top 10 finish, no doubt. You kind of know with Italy, though, don't you? It's just always going to do well. Yeah, well, that's what I'm thinking. Always gets votes. It got third in the televote last year. And... Yes, I know. I was there. I was like, what's this? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Why people hearing that I'm not? Did it sound like shouting live? It sounded like just dreadful. Just, I mean, but I'm stood next to Andy. Andy loves it. It's like this is the best thing ever. Like, what are you watching? It's crap. No, but that leads me to. Uh, I'm going to ask this randomly, but you go to a lot of Eurovision song contests, and it was my first time. I went to Australia Decides this year, and it's interesting how people say on TV, "Oh, wow, that that sounds different." I watch it on TV, and I go, "Oh, yeah, it did." Um, do you ever see performances, and you're like? It's just completely different um, yeah, live. Yeah, yeah. So I, w I was at the UK final, and uh, and and I thought everything sounded great. I thought Anissa sounded really good um, in her song, and uh, I was reliably informed when I came out that she was off key or patchy at, at, in places, and she was. Uh, I still think she delivered a, a, de a decent vocal, but she was. She was patchy in places. Other so other singers were also patchy in places. When you're in the hall, you don't hear this sort of stuff. You know, at the Australian final, there were a few uh, notes out of place in, for different singers. But, you know, when we spoke directly after, you told me that it all sounded great. You don't hear that when you're in the hall. Mm. Yeah. You only hear it when you watch it back. Mm. I'm here with Lam from v Vietnam, Asian tastemaker new Eurovision fan, and he's about to react to Italy and give us some of his reviews. So, Lamb, check out Italy. So, what's the song name? Sodi by Mahmood? Sodi by Mahmood, yes. Okay, so, okay, one, two, three, go. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, a very nice song, um, a very different approach and a totally different to what uh, I expected of Italy, is it? So yeah, I thought it was going to be, you know, very, um, very Italy, very, um, how to say, like um, popular or um, a, a more, more smooth. But actually, it turned around to be, uh, it, it sounds very um, Latino rather than um, European. And even the, the tone of the, the video, like the red tone, it looks so um, Latino. Um, yeah, it's very, it's, it has a very good tempo. Like it makes me like want to dance along with this song. And um, But it's... Well, uh, as a PT, like, I couldn't get what the meaning of the song based on the, the, the video. I hope I could, but unfortunately I couldn't. But yeah, I think um, it could be a great song to be performed on the stage because of the tempo, because of the melody. And maybe he can head lay a, a, um, a whole dance crew. It could make the performance very impressive. Yeah, so that's what my, my take on, um, on this song. Do you think the music video is too complex to understand a, a message? Yeah, way too complex. Um, I think like maybe it could be an uh, an approach of the team to you know draw some attention or <clears throat> some curiosity from the audience. Like maybe they might reveal something else on the stage at the live performance. That's what I thought. But um, yeah, interesting and easy to listen to. But um, if I can understand the meaning of the song, that could be great. 
I'll tell you a little bit about what the meaning is. It's about him losing his dad. He, his dad died when he was very young. So okay. he never, yeah, when he was a baby, I think. So he never had a father presence. So this whole song is him trying to to kind of feel the to become mm. his dad as well as himself or something like that. Okay. So overall, what did you do? You think of this song? Would it be a song you'd listen to or, or not at all? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, could be the song I listen to. You know, on my way to the gym. Uh, you know, ten minutes before the gym, it could, you know. <laughs> um, give me a quick boost, mental boost. Um, yeah, very Latino. I mean, like I always love Latino songs. Like this song reminds me of um, Havana. Yeah, so very Latino, not you know European at all. No offense, but I like that. But very Latino. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting observation. Shall we talk about Italy? I'm excited. Italy. <laughs> yes, we can. All right. Italy. Oh, oh, this one's fun. You do your intro. <laughs> <laughs> this is Elise, Elise Turner talking about Italy. Um, Soldi by Mahmoud. I'll give it to you, Elise. Oh, I don't know. Are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> this is a pretty complex song. It's good. It's interesting. There's a lot happening. Um, so we've got our male singer. And we have two languages, which is not apparent on the first look, especially to those English speakers only. But you've got your Italian as your main language, and then you have a sneaky one and a half lines of Arabic. Just in the middle, not next to each other. It's like uh, Italian line, Arabic line, Italian line, half a line of Arabic finished with Italian. And that's in, like what I'm going to call the bridge. Yeah. So we'll get into that later. But I was just like, wow, I was almost missed that. But then I Google translated the lyrics and I'm like, why, why isn't that one translated? I'm like, oh, it's another language. So I thought that was really sneaky. Just chuck it in a bit of Arabic. I'm assuming maybe the, the artists got um, roots from um, there. So probably why, but you know, it was kind of cool. Um, in terms of range, we are just over an octave at D sharp three to F sharp four, which means we are in another sharp key with D sharp minor. So that's our second sharp minor key. Like that's that's probably one of the most boring facts. Sharp minor keys aren't that important. They're not that cool or interesting or different. They're just sharps, which means they they start on a black note. That's about it. <laughs> so we have a full four song, uh, just like the rest of the ones we've looked at so far, and we are at a slower speed at 96 beats per minute. So that's like hungry, uh, but also much slower than everything else we've been looking at. And you know. That's cool. They're welcome to be slow. I'm just usually less interested in slow songs. That's a personal preference. <laughs> uh, we have five chords, uh, one, three, five, six, and seven um, used throughout the piece. And my goodness, I'm not surprised there's five because any less would be insane considering how much this song does. But before I get into that, we'll talk about what instruments we've got. Got our classic vocals, and then we had some Spanish guitar. That's what gives it that um, really, um, I don't know, it's a bit of a lighter sort of sound. Um, and that's because the Spanish guitars have nylon strings only, whereas our your standard guitar would have like half nylon or and metal or full metal, depending on how cheap you are, basically, <laughs> what sort of strings you're buying. So that's what gives it that um, different sort of sound for the guitar. Uh, we've got some piano, uh, we've got some synth strings, and we've got some bass synth, and we have a little bit of backup vocals. Now, on to our structure. Our structure is insane. I don't know how to describe it in, like, Western sort of systems. And that, by that I mean, like, intro, verse one, chorus, bridge, pre-chorus, outro, etc. Because there are, uh, there's a lot going on. And they're not consistently, like, together, which means that it's not, like, A and B as, like, a verse consistently. It's jumping around all over the place. But that's cool. It keeps it really interesting. You've got these, um, essentially there's four recurring sections, which you can, like, hear and you can be like, oh, yeah, that sounds familiar to what I was listening to before. And then you've got a couple of extra bits here and there, but they're not, like, 
necessarily verse one, verse two, etc. So I drew a really weird system to understand this. And Mitch, you've got the picture of this. <laughs> But I broke it up and did little diagrams to like sort of understand what it was based on like what I heard, which, you know, isn't exactly an accurate representation of what the section is, but it's how I sort of understood it. So we have our intro, which is the same as our B section without the vocals. Um, and I called that the hey -ah section because the comeva sounded a bit like hey -ah, and I didn't want to write comeva initially because I'm like, ah, I don't need to write Italian, I'll just write hey -ah, that's close enough. Um, and that's for two bars. Then you have our A section. And for A, I did like a little squiggle with a dip and then up because that's sort of how the vocal line melody went. Um, so we have that for eight bars. Then we have our B section again, our hey -ah section again for eight, uh, for two bars. And then we've got our build. Um, and that's because in the build section or our C section, uh, section C, <laughs> um, the, the song builds, like it, it just sort of gradually gets bigger. And this, so that, for that reason, it's was called my build section. Um, section D is what I call the Safia section. Now, it's not at all a Safia-like sound. It's just really big on the bass and Safia, the band, loves their bass. And I'm like, well, you know what, big bass here, big breakdown. Therefore, I'm calling it Safia. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just like restructure the whole... <laughs> all, all of music. Well, I wrote, I wrote, hey up, little line. I wrote, hey up, build, Safia, hey up, line, hey up, build, Safia. Like, it and makes sense. Ready? And I put letters afterwards because I'm like, how am I going to tell this apart? Because it's in Italian, it's Italian, yeah? Italian is not my language. And I didn't want to like. You go to Italy now and they'll be like, in the Safia section of the song. <laughs> <laughs> no one else will structure it like this. <laughs> I don't want to like misplace bits because obviously I don't recognise the language. I'm not listening to the words per se. I'm more listening to the vibe of like the section. And so I'm like, well, this is something I'll understand. Um, so those are my four main sections. And then we have a bridge, which I call the Habibi section. <laughs> Because in there, they mention Habibi. Like, that is a word they use. And I'm like, yeah, that's my Habibi section. <laughs> so I'm now going to, like, talk about the bars and stuff, but using letters. And, Mitch, maybe you can put up what I've put for. Like, I in will. The kit right you. And also, Elise has been doing um, breakdowns of entries on her website. So there'll be a link in the description mm. for when she publishes the Italy one. So check that out. I don't even know how I'm going to publish that one on my website. I've been writing chorus and stuff. I'm like, I don't know, A, B, Z, give up. <laughs> so you got your intro or B section for two bars to start, A for eight, B for two, C for eight, D for six, um, sorry, uh, B for two, your A dash or your second version of A, which is a bit like verse two except it's not a verse, for six. Uh, B for two, C for eight, D for six, E for eight, C dash, so second version of C for eight, D for six, and B for two. Now, the reason I talk about second versions is because those versions are slightly different in the way in which they're structured. They're very similar. Um, so, for example, the second version of A is two bars shorter, and that's because it doesn't have quite the same sort of, like, dip at the end of the melody line. And so that's what makes it a slightly different one. Um, I can't remember what was different about the C section, which would be the build section, but probably something similar. Probably it just built built differently or it was already built and it just kept going, you know, growing, bigger, bolder, stronger, faster. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's my confusing breakdown of how that song is structured. I will eventually have a picture for it on my blog. <laughs> That might make a lot more sense. So I know you like piano. Um, yes. I, I heard this is, um, there was that section with piano. I, I, I said it was like bashing on piano. Um, what do you think of that? You know, there was like, do, 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 do. 
what 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 timestamp? Because I don't know what you're talking about with that. <laughs> it's like da 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 the dun 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 dun, that's what I call my Safia section. The oh, section. got it. Yeah, because it's like a big breakdown. Like the build is where the piano sort of comes in and then the Safia's like, yeah, we're just going to drop the bass. We're going to keep it going. We're going to have that to groove to. Um, I liked it. I think big, even though there's a lot going on, like very few people are going to realise just how complex this structure is and how much is going on in it. But it works nicely. And I don't even care that I had the language barrier. I was grooving to it. I was really enjoying it. And it was flowing very nicely, one section to the next section to the one after. And only when I started breaking it down was I like, oh, my goodness, this is insane. I give up. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I, I thought it worked really nicely. I love the piano. I always love the piano. But um, the build into the Safia is the best. And I have yet to record a piano section of it because I'm like, well, there's so much going on. I don't even know which section to record for you. I mean, I will do one. I just don't know which. And I've got the chords for each section. I just got to figure out which one will sound best. Mm. Yeah. What do you think of his uh, voice as a tone? Uh, let me listen to a snippet again. <laughs> which one? Mahmood. Is that how you say it? Mahmood. <laughs> Aprenderei per un bugiardo, ti sembrava amore ma era altro. Deve champagne, sotto Ramadan, alla TV, la noce di piano, fuma un arghile, mi chiede come va. Mi chiede come va, come va, come va, sai già come va. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya. See, this is a build. We're gonna get soft, soft in the thing again. I love that bit, like the, the up. Sephia section! <laughs> yes, so now that I've finished dancing, <laughs> what do I say? I go to a concert, I dance. I go have a concert in my room, I dance. <laughs> I got a glimpse of what the Hot Potato Band concert was like. Oh, I, I didn't jump though. I'm sitting in a chair. <laughs> That's a great chair move though. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I really liked his voice. Um, it was really soothing, if that makes sense. I don't know if that's why they chose him, but I, I just thought it was quite a really soothing thing to listen to and that bridged the um, sections of the instruments, which are so different. And it's like he's not singing like much in terms of range, but they're going up. And it's constantly like having something interesting happening in the melody line. And I really liked that. It worked really well. Before I go into the music video, because I listened to my songs on Spotify to analyze, what I thought was really cool was that the artist picture, he's wearing a Rayquaza shirt. And I love Pokemon. So I'm like, oh, this is the Pokemon song at first. And then I got to listen to that. I'm like, this is a Pokemon song. But it's still a cool song. <laughs> is he sad? That was my first question. Because he's looking down a lot at the start and, like, towards the middle as well. He's often looking down. Um, maybe he forgot his lyrics and they're on the floor in front of him because that would be a great cheat way to be, like, singing your lyrics when you've forgotten them. Just, oh, no, I'm going to be moody for this song. Looking down. da 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 um, But then he changed to, like, be an angry stand-up after he was looking, sitting and looking down, he turned into like someone standing, looking forward, but he was angry. So he's, he's angry, sad, maybe. Um, it's a really aesthetically pleasing music video. You've got some really nice shots in it and it's kind of cool, but he also looks sad the whole time. I don't know if that's intentional or if he just, it's just his resting face. Like, you know how people have resting bitch face? Maybe he's just got resting sad face. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um... I thought it was weird at the start. They had, like, a shot of Mother Mary, like, the little statue on, like, the table. I'm like, is that significant? Um, and then at the end they've got, like, a veiled female presence. So we don't see a face. And I'm like, well, is that significant? Are we lo losing, like, a mother figure? 
do we not have that mother figure present? Um, and is he has he lost his female role model? Maybe that's why he's angry, sad, um, because we never see the face, and the only like figure that we see is literally a figurine of Mother Mary, which is a very Catholic thing. I don't know if that's um, something in Italy that they think about much. I'm not very down with the cultural trends there. I'm sure it is because they're a hev heavily uh, Catholic country. Mm, but um, um, and I noticed yeah, in so the I movie, there's a bit where there's the boy kind of standing in front of a sea of men, wasn't it? It was only men, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but you, you don't see any faces of females at mm. all. And that's why I'm like, well, maybe there's no female presence in his life. Maybe that's what the video is about. He's dealing a lot with um, a guy in a car, with tattoos everywhere. He gets a tattoo himself. So maybe he's just following in the footsteps of these male figures. Mm. But then I translated the lyrics and I was wrong. So basically the, the lyrics kind of talk about how it's not the mother figure that he's lost, it's the father figure. And so you've got the boy dealing with the guy and what I am assuming is happening there is that it's the guy dealing with who might have been his father, um, but he doesn't have his father anymore. And so he's trying to like emulate his father by getting the tattoo and he's lost his father. And at the end you've got the, the female figure who failed taking him away. Maybe it's because it was a bad situation. And so I, I don't know. I thought that was interesting how, like, watching the video, I was like, oh, maybe this is it. And then I'm like, oh, okay, it was the other way around. Mm, fascinating. It sure was something. <laughs> <laughs> the best. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, well, Actually, if you're going to say it was sure was something to anything, that's the one. <laughs> well, really well done. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Good job at analysing that one. You can check out um, all the other videos and subscribe by checking out all the other videos. And until next time, bonsoir Europe and goodbye.